think the, the major obstacle really is just the difference. I, mean, I, I like to say when I'm going around promoting the use of Eurocodes, and you can probably tell I'm enthusiastic about the Eurocodes, um, is that there is difficulty in, in changing over. But it's not that the codes themselves are more difficult. It's just that they're different. So I think most of the obstacles that you face are the difference. Um, and there are some quite, quite significant differences uh, at first at face value. So, for example, a lot of the terminology in the Euro codes is quite different to what we're used to. There are some new words. But those new words have all got very specific meanings, and they've been introduced because all the codes were drafted in English initially. And so when they're translated into other languages, it's absolutely essential that they mean the same to everybody. So, for example, we no longer say sheer capacity, although everyone will know what you mean. Uh, we should say sheer resistance, because the word resistance is used only for strength. And there is a word capacity in the Euro codes, but it's only used for matters relating to deflection. So there's a lot of these sort of words which have very specific meaning. Um, now that probably, that particular example probably wouldn't cause anybody any confusion. Um, but when we get onto combinations of actions, there is some new terminology there, which is quite alien when you first pick up the Euro codes. So you may be presented with a statement in the code um, to consider isostatic effects of shrinkage in the quasi-permanent combination of actions. And if you're not familiar with that sort of speak, it sounds like gibberish. Um, so that's quite off-putting, and it, it appears to be an obstacle, but it really isn't actually that difficult to pick these words up. And what, I, what we've found is when we give the Eurocodes to new designers uh, for the first time, they are intimidated because there's a lot of documents. Now, there are far more parts of the Eurocode uh, than there were with the equivalent British standards, and that's just a function of the way they've been written. Different project teams have looked at different areas. So for a typical bridge project, you, need about, you can need up to 20 documents on your desk. And what, what happens is when we first present those documents to a new designer, they do tend to be a little bit unsettled. Um, but when they've come back from sick leave for two weeks yeah, and they actually get down to grips with it, they actually found it's not that bad. And, and there is a learning curve, but I, I would say typically we find after about two weeks or so, people have got to grips with the new terminology. They've got to grips with the layout of the, of the codes. And they're really pretty much back up to speed. Um, with the basics. 